Hansel and Gretel A poor woodcutter lived with his wife and two children on the edge of a large forest. The boy was called Hansel and the girl Gretel. The woodcutter did not have much food around the house, and when a great famine devastated the entire country, he could no longer provide enough for his family's daily meals. One night, as he was lying in bed and thinking about his worries, he began tossing and turning. Then he sighed and said to his wife, "'What's to become of us? How can we feed our poor children when we don't even have enough for ourselves?' "'I'll tell you what,' answered his wife. "'Early tomorrow morning we'll take the children out into the forest where it's most dense. We'll build a fire and give them each a piece of bread. Then we'll go about our work and leave them alone. They won't find their way back home and we'll be rid of them.' "'No, wife,' the man said. "'I won't do this. I don't have the heart to leave my children in the forest. The wild beasts would soon come and tear them apart.' "'Oh, you fool!' she said. "'Then all four of us will have to starve to death. "'You'd better start planing the boards for our coffins.' "'She continued to harp on this until finally he agreed to do what she suggested. "'But still, I feel sorry for the poor children,' he said. "'The two children had not been able to fall asleep that night either. "'Their hunger kept them awake.' And when they heard what their stepmother said to their father, Gretel wept bitter tears and said to Hansel, "'Now it's all over for us.' "'Be quiet, Gretel,' Hansel said. "'Don't get upset. I'll soon find a way to help us.' When their parents had fallen asleep, Hansel put on his little jacket, opened the bottom half of the door, and crept outside. The moon was shining very brightly, and the white pebbles glittered in front of the house like pure silver coins. Hansel stooped down to the ground and stuffed his pocket with as many pebbles as he could fit in. Then he went back and said to Gretel, "'Don't worry, my dear little sister. Just sleep in peace. God will not forsake us.' And he lay down again in his bed. At dawn, even before the sun began to rise, the woman came and woke the two children. "'Get up, you lazy bones! We're going into the forest to fetch some wood.' Then she gave each one of them a piece of bread and said, now you have something for your noonday meal, but don't eat it before then, because you're not getting anything else. Gretel put the bread under her apron, because Hansel had the pebbles in his pockets. Then they all set out together toward the forest. After they had walked a while, Hansel stopped and looked back at the house. He did this time and time again, until his father said, Hansel, what are you looking at there? Why are you dawdling? Pay attention and don't forget how to use your legs. Oh, father! said Hansel. I'm looking at my little white cat that's sitting up on the roof and wants to say goodbye to me. You fool, the mother said. That's not a cat. It's the morning sun shining up on the chimney. But Hansel had not been looking at the cat. Instead, he had been taking the shiny pebbles from his pocket and constantly dropping them on the ground. When they reached the middle of the forest, the father said, Children, I want you to gather some wood. I'm going to make a fire so you won't get cold. Hansel and Gretel gathered together some brushwood and built quite a nice little pile. The brushwood was soon kindled, and when the fire was ablaze, the woman said, "'Now, children, lie down by the fire and rest yourselves. We're going into the forest to chop wood. When we're finished, we'll come back and get you.' Hansel and Gretel sat by the fire, and when noon came, they ate their pieces of bread. Since they heard the sounds of the axe, they thought their father was nearby. But it was not the axe. Rather, it was a branch that he had tied to a dead tree, and the wind was banging it back and forth. After they had been sitting there for a long time, they became so weary that their eyes closed, and they fell sound asleep. By the time they finally awoke, it was already pitch black, and Gretel began to cry and said, "'How are we going to get out of the forest?' But Hansel comforted her by saying, "'Just wait a while until the moon has risen. Then we'll find the way.' And when the full moon had risen, Hansel took his little sister by the hand and followed the pebbles that glittered like newly minted silver coins and showed them the way. They walked the whole night long and arrived back at their father's house at the break of day. They knocked at the door and when the woman opened it and saw it was Hansel and Gretel, she said, "'You wicked children! Why did you sleep so long in the forest? We thought you'd never come back again!' But the father was delighted because he had been deeply troubled by the way he had abandoned them in the forest. Not long after that, the entire country was once again ravaged by famine, 
and one night the children heard their mother talking to their father in bed. Everything's been eaten up again. We only have half a loaf of bread, but after it's gone, that will be the end of our food. The children must leave. This time we'll take them even farther into the forest, so they won't find their way back home again. Otherwise, there's no hope for us. All this saddened the father, and he thought, It'd be much better to share your last bite to eat with your children. But the woman would not listen to anything he said. She just scolded and reproached him. Once you've given a hand, people will take your arm. And since he had given in the first time, he also had to yield a second time. However, the children were still awake and had overheard their conversation. When their parents had fallen asleep, Hansel got up, intending to go out and gather pebbles as he had done the time before. But the woman had locked the door, and Hansel could not get out. Nevertheless, he comforted his little sister and said, "'Don't cry, Gretel. Just sleep in peace. The dear Lord is bound to help us.' Early the next morning the woman came and got the children out of bed. They each received little pieces of bread, but they were smaller than the last time. On the way into the forest, Hansel crumbled the bread in his pocket and stopped as often as he could to throw the crumbs on the ground. "'Hansel, why are you always stopping and looking around?' asked the father. "'Keep going.' "'I'm looking at my little pigeon that's sitting on the roof and wants to say goodbye to me,' Hansel answered. "'Fool,' the woman said. "'That's not a little pigeon. It's the morning sun shining on the chimney.' But, little by little, Hansel managed to scatter all the breadcrumbs on the path. The woman led the children even deeper into the forest until they came to a spot they had never in their lives seen before. Once again a large fire was made, and the mother said, "'Just keep sitting here, children.' If you get tired, you can sleep a little. We're going into the forest to chop wood, and in the evening, when we're done, we'll come and get you. When noon came, Gretel shared her bread with Hansel, who had scattered his along the way. Then they fell asleep, and evening passed, but no one came for the poor children. Only when it was pitch black did they finally wake up, and Hansel comforted his little sister by saying, Just wait until the moon has risen, Gretel. Then we'll see the little bread crumbs that I scattered. They'll show us the way back home. When the moon rose, they set out, but could not find the crumbs, because the many thousands of birds that fly about in the forest and fields had devoured them. Don't worry, we'll find the way, Hansel said to Gretel. But they could not find it. They walked the entire night, and all the next day as well, from morning till night, but they did not get out of the forest. They were now also very hungry, for they had had nothing to eat except some berries that they had found growing on the ground. Eventually they became so tired that their legs would no longer carry them, and they lay down beneath a tree and fell asleep. It was now the third morning since they had left their father's house. They began walking again, and they kept going deeper and deeper into the forest. If help did not arrive soon, they were bound to perish of hunger and exhaustion. At noon they saw a beautiful bird as white as snow sitting on a branch. It sang with such a lovely voice that the children stood still and listened to it. When the bird finished its song, it flapped its wings and flew ahead of them. They followed it until they came to a little house that was made of bread. Moreover, it had cake for a roof and pure sugar for windows. "'What a blessed meal!' said Hansel. "'Let's have a taste. I want to eat a piece of the roof. Gretel, you can have some of the window, since it's sweet.' Hansel reached up high and broke off a piece of the roof to see how it tasted, and Gretel leaned against the window panes and nibbled on them. Then they heard a shrill voice cry out from inside. "'Nibble, nibble, I hear a mouse! Who's that nibbling at my house?' The children answered, "'The wind, the wind, it's very mild, blowing like the heavenly child.' And they did not bother to stop eating or let themselves be distracted. Since the roof tasted so good, Hansel ripped off a large piece and pulled it down, while Gretel pushed out a round piece of the window pane, sat down, and ate it with great relish. Suddenly the door opened, and a very old woman leaning on a crutch came slinking out of the house. Hansel and Gretel were so tremendously frightened that they dropped what they had in their hands. But the old woman wagged her head and said, "'Well now, dear children, who brought you here? Just come inside and stay with me. Nobody
nobody's going to harm you. She took them both by the hand and led them into her house. Then she served them a good meal of milk and pancakes with sugar and apples and nuts. Afterward, she made up two little beds with white sheets, whereupon Hansel and Gretel lay down in them and thought they were in heaven. The old woman, however, had only pretended to be friendly. She was really a wicked witch on the lookout for children, and had built the house made of bread only to lure them to her. As soon as she had any children in her power, she would kill, cook, and eat them. It would be like a feast day for her. Now witches have red eyes and cannot see very far, but they have a keen sense of smell like animals and can detect when human beings are near them. Therefore, when Hansel and Gretel had come into her vicinity, she had laughed wickedly and scoffed, They're mine! They'll never get away from me! Early the next morning, before the children were awake, she got up and looked at the two of them sleeping so sweetly with full rosy cheeks. Then she muttered to herself, They'll certainly make for a tasty meal! She seized Hansel with her scrawny hands and carried him into a small pen, where she locked him up behind a grilled door. No matter how much he screamed, it did not help. Then she went back to Gretel, shook her until she woke, and yelled, Get up, you lazy bones! I want you to fetch some water and cook your brother something nice. He's sitting outside in a pen, and we've got to fatten him up. Then when he's fat enough, I'm going to eat him. Gretel began to weep bitter tears, but they were all in vain. She had to do what the wicked witch demanded, so the very best food was cooked for poor Hansel, while Gretel got nothing but crab shells. Every morning the old woman went slinking to the little pen and called out, Hansel, stick out your finger so I can feel how fat you are. However, Hansel stuck out a little bone, and since the old woman had poor eyesight, she thought the bone was Hansel's finger. She was puzzled that Hansel did not get any fatter, and when a month had gone by and Hansel still seemed to be thin, she was overcome by her impatience, and decided not to wait any longer. "'Hey there, Gretel!' she called to the little girl. "'Get a move on and fetch some water. I don't care whether Hansel's fat or thin. He's going to be slaughtered tomorrow, and then I'll cook him. Oh, how the poor little sister wailed as she was carrying the water, and how the tears streamed down her cheeks. Dear God, help us, she exclaimed. If only the wild beasts had eaten us in the forest, then we could at least have died together. Early the next morning, Gretel had to go out, hang up a kettle full of water, and light the fire. First we'll bake, the old woman said. I've already heated the oven and kneaded the dough. She pushed poor Gretel out to the oven where the flames were leaping from the fire. Crawl inside, said the witch, and see if it's properly heated so we can slide the bread in. The witch intended to close the oven door once Gretel had climbed inside, for the witch wanted to bake her and eat her too. But Gretel sensed what she had in mind and said, I don't know how to do it. How do I get in? You stupid goose, the old woman said. The opening's large enough. Watch, even I can get in. She waddled up to the oven and stuck her head through the oven door. Then Gretel gave her a push that sent her flying inside and shut the iron door and bolted it. Whew! The witch began to howl dreadfully, but Gretel ran away and the witch was burned. Meanwhile, Gretel ran straight to Hansel, opened the pen, and cried out, Hansel, we're saved! The old witch is dead! Then Hansel jumped out of the pen like a bird that hops out of a cage when the door is opened. My, how happy they were! They hugged each other, danced around, and kissed. Since they no longer had anything to fear, they went into the witch's house, and there they found chests filled with pearls and jewels all over the place. "'They're certainly much better than pebbles,' said Hansel, and he put whatever he could fit into his pockets, and Gretel said, "'I'm going to carry some home, too,' and she filled her apron full of jewels and pearls. "'We'd better be on our way now,' 
said Hansel, so we can get out of the witch's forest. When they had walked for a few hours, they reached a large river. We can't get across, said Hansel. I don't see a bridge or any way over it. There are no boats either, Gretel responded. But there's a white duck swimming over there. It's bound to help us across if I ask it. Then she cried out, Help us, help us, little duck. It's Hansel and Gretel, and we're really stuck. We can't get over, try as we may. Please take us across right away. The little duck came swimming up to them, and Hansel got on top of its back and told his sister to sit down beside him. No, Gretel answered. That will be too heavy for the little duck. Let it carry us across just one at a time. The kind little duck did just that, and when they were safely across and had walked on for some time, the forest became more and more familiar to them, and finally they caught sight of their father's house from afar. They began to run at once and soon rushed into the house and threw themselves around their father's neck. The man had not had a single happy hour since he had abandoned his children in the forest, and in the meantime his wife had died. Gretel opened and shook out her apron so that the pearls and jewels bounced about the room, and Hansel added to this by throwing one handful after another from his pocket. Now all their troubles were over, and they lived together in utmost joy. My tail is done. See the mouse run. Catch it, whoever can, and then you can make a great big cap out of its fur. <laughs>